What's going on guys? Storm6678 back with another tutorial. Now today, we're going to be going over yet again magic bullet looks. So I, the reason why we're going over it again is just because uh, that tutorial was like a year and a half ago. And I just want to reiterate some of the things and some new things that I've started to do when adding color correction to my videos. Now, for those of you that don't know, color correction is when you alter the state of your video. Like the, it's like a filter. So, you know, Instagram filters, it's the same thing as in Instagram filters. Now, it is a third party plugin, so you are going to have to download it. Uh, be careful when downloading because you can accidentally download a virus uh, if you download it for free. I don't recommend buying it because you can get it for free without a virus. But um, so these, this is an example. These are all my like quote unquote looks. Uh, so when I drag them onto my clip, it changes the color of my or what's like what it looks like. You know what I mean? It's a it's a filter. So that's that one. Um, if I do control Z, it'll remove it again because it's the undo button. Uh, let's see what this looks like. So that looks like that. I kind of like that. Uh, let's do like, like this one really random. That's too bright. You know what I mean? So I just have all these presets, um, saved. Uh, make sure you smash that like button and drop a comment if you want me to make a little color correction pack from my magic bullet looks. I have... I don't even know how many I have. I have like easily like over a hundred, probably close to 200. Um, but yeah, so other than that, uh, let's get right into it. Now to start, right? Once you have magic bullet looks, uh, this is Sony Vegas pro 16. You're going to take this default and drag it onto your clip or your timeline. I usually draw, drag it onto my timeline because I do very subtle CCs that kind of boost the colors and contrast. But if your clips are drastically different, so ready to look at this clip and then look at the actual clip, see how it's purple, you can put it on the individual clips themselves. But personally, I put it on the track and I try to make it like just a very generic and slight difference in uh, tone like boosting the mids and that stuff now a lot of you guys if you don't have a very good PC a lot of you guys are gonna want to make sure you're on best full now the reason why you're gonna be on best full is because if you go if you're like rendering and you're not on the best or er, previewing and you're not on the best PC you're probably gonna be viewing in draft quarter now when you drag magic bullet looks on it's gonna crash Vegas, okay? So make sure it's best full before you uh, go into the looks builder because it's generating a look based off the, the off of the frame that you this cursor is on. So when I drag default, right? Not on, I'm not gonna drag it onto my clip, I'm gonna drag it onto my timeline, right? So when I'm here and I press edit right here, opens it up it builds the look from that specific frame all right now that we're in here um i just want to reiterate if i'm moving too fast just go back and watch again you can also change the time by the gear a uh to slow it down like half or however slow much slower you want it but i just want to get straight to the point of this tutorial and before i do make sure you smash that subscribe button if you want more videos like this or Leave a comment uh, saying if you don't like my tutorials and you want to see more edits. I love criticism, so just let me know. All right, so here we are in the looks builder, okay? So you have subject, matte, lens, camera, and post. So all of these are going to bring up different options you can add to adjust the look of your scene, clip, whatever you want. Now, here's a huge list of things you can put on the subject. Now I'm not going to go through every single one of them because I don't use every single one of them. Uh, the three that I use, especially on subject are exposure, contrast, and curves. Now the way I added those is I hovered over tools. I went down to curves or whichever one I want and I just double clicked it. 
and it drags it over here. Now, if you want, if you accidentally add something, you can just take it and drag it over here. I think you can, no, you gotta drag it over here in the controls like box and it'll disappear. Um, or you can press delete on your keyboard. Now I'm double clicking and I have that here. Now with exposure, you wanna be very careful. You do too much, you can't see anything. You do too little, you can't see anything. So usually what I like to do is point to contrast and it just brightens it a little bit. Point two might even be a little high for me, but um, contrast, once again, I just boost it a little bit, bring it up a little bit. Like you can see how it darkens the background a little bit and the shadows makes it pop more. Uh, point two five is a little much, point two might be a good range, point one nine. And then curves is where you're really gonna mess with a lot of this stuff. So as you're hovering, you can see in this top right corner, it shows you what the RGB values for that area is. So if you wanna switch to like say red and you hover over this area, it'll change the values. That's kind of a way to like guide how you're using it. Um, but to start, we're gonna start with the RGB tab. You're gonna increase, this is what I do. I increase the contrast, uh, decrease the shadows, and then boost the midtones and decrease the highlights. Now, depending on your clip, you will adjust this differently, okay? Don't copy exactly what I do, but whenever I touch just the RGB channel, it's only minor adjustments in adding or subtracting from the video. Now, if I go to red, uh, for this video, I want a blue and like purple kind of vibe. So I'm gonna turn the uh, shadows and midtones of my red up a little bit, and then just turn that contrast down and highlights down. Green, I'm gonna turn everything down just a little bit because I don't want that much green in it. Blue, I'm gonna turn the contrast up, the shadows up, the midtones up, and the highlights down. All right, and this is the difference it makes. All right, it's very slight and subtle, but I think it looks good. Now, if you have any questions about the curves, for curves feel free to DM me on Discord or uh, Instagram, and I can kind of help you gauge where you want to go with that. So the next portion of the looks builder is the mat. Now the mat, I don't really use many of these things, but it's mostly diffusion and this gradient uh you can do spot exposure and grad exposure but for fortnite i really don't think that looks good but just to give you guys a thing a little uh preview of what diffusion does it makes it a little glossy all right like foggy excuse me not glossy foggy and you can adjust it so that the diffusion is only around like the subject or more so on the whole thing it's almost like a film over the um, video and you can adjust the glow have the glow more or less and also the color of the, the diffusion so now I have a little bit of a purple layer around my character but I'm not going to use that I don't really use it as much um, maybe for an effect like a impact or something but overall I don't really touch the diffusion now the gradient is pretty cool it puts a color gradient on your video and you can adjust the color so I'll do like red for instance and I, I think this is useful for like scenes or something so you can do like this like the gradient like that I think that's pretty cool and then um, you can add another gradient to have it going the opposite way so you have like two sides like red and blue or like red and green where we have red and yellow is pretty cool red and blue yeah so something like that uh, you could do with that but uh, like I said I just like to make subtle changes boosting the colors and the mid-tones and highlights uh, all right lens now the only thing I really use from lens is edge softness but like it really doesn't look that good unless it's on like strictly cinematics I just think it looks too fuzzy but it's for that like dreamy look kind of look um haze and flare is pretty cool it's a similar thing to the diffusion except you get to change the reach so you see how it like clears up the center and now it's only on the sides so you can adjust that and also adjust the color as well um chromatic aberration this is cool i like to use this for 
uh, like impacts and stuff. I'll keyframe it, but it's literally just like popping it like time warp RGB. Uh, for those of you don't, who don't know what that is, it's a um, Sapphire plugin. But that's pretty cool. Um, next, we have camera. Now, camera is where I do use one thing. Uh, every now and again, I'll adjust the curves, but I've been playing around with the warm cool and right here uh, this rainbow box is the like, you can manly manually adjust and like go around oh that's hilarious it's like a light show um, you can manually go around and change what you want but I like controlling it from the warm cool and tint numbers so if you turn it up it gets cooler for the warm cool if you turn it down it gets warmer and you can adjust kind of like a like an indie vibe uh, in that way but once again I don't like to adjust the colors too much and since I'm going for like a blue vibe I'm gonna make it plus like one right now and it's just gonna give it a little bit more of a blue tint um, now the tint is like a green and pink kind of sense to it so I'm gonna turn that down a little bit like negative point four is a little much so i'm gonna do negative point like one and i think that looks pretty damn good and it gives me that purple like bluish vibe that i was looking for uh now the last uh category in the looks builder is post and for post once again you have like your curves film grain um te telecine net I, i've actually never said that word out loud um, this is a pretty cool one. It like adds contrast and like a gradient uh, exposure on it, but we're not going to use that. Um, the color ranges and colorized three way is also pretty cool. I don't really use it that much, but you basically are able to colorize the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. So, like for example, like something like this is an extreme example, but something like that you can definitely play around with. Uh, if I turn down the strength. You see how it's like a little bit more subtle now but um what i really use in the post uh category is the ranged hsl uh that's hue and saturation and lightness uh it gives you red orange yellow green cyan blue purple and magenta uh, what you can do is adjust the saturation for just those colors so say i have red and i boost it all the way you can clearly see it's popping but if i turn it all the way down now you don't see any red whatsoever um going along with that so you see how i have it popping here the hue if you adjust the hue oh, whoops if you adjust the hue by dragging to the right it makes it more orange drag it to the left it makes it more magenta so you can play around with that as well um this is also good for when you want to like focus colors uh, so in my case, I want to focus mainly the blues and purples. So I'm going to boost the blue a little bit, boost the purple a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the magenta to be more purple and rotate the cyan to be more blue. Now it makes it a lot more blue than what it was before. You see how it's more bluish purple. That's kind of what I want. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the green to be a little bit more blue as well as well as turn that saturation down um, make sure the orange yellow saturation is down as well and i think that looks pretty damn cold um, but overall you can do that i don't really touch the lightness but once again it's all dependent on the clip or scene that you're working on to make it look how you want it to look um, so then uh, once i'm done with this i'm going to click finished all right now i'm going to go to my effects by clicking this FX right here and I have oh I put it on my timeline I forgot so I'm gonna go to my timeline I'm gonna go to track effects and I have my magic bullet looks now here where it says default I'm gonna name it uh, so blue tut uh, for example and I'm gonna click this save preset now I'm gonna X out and when I go I click on something else go back to magic bullet looks it's gonna be the last one that I had right here uh, and if you look right here, I'll show you the difference. So there and there. And you can clearly tell there's a color correction on that. And I think it looks pretty damn good. Um, now, like I said, like if I look on this clip, 
it's a little hard to tell it looks like halfway decent uh, but if I go on this clip that actually looks halfway decent but it looks darker than like say like these clips you know what I mean and then this last clip it obviously will look different too so sometimes you need to play around with it and adjust it according to the clip but overall that's kind of the general gist of the effect um, so yeah, that's really it. And make sure if you have any uh, questions, you comment or DM me. And as always, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Any support's appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.